Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to set up sequential numbering. We'll learn how to set up numbers that go from one to whatever with no gaps for invoice numbers. Today's question comes from Timothy. Timothy says, I'm using an auto number for order ID in my table, just like you taught me. But my accountant wants me to have sequential numbers for reporting purposes. What should I do? I get it. Your accountant wants to make sure that your your numbers, your order numbers are all in sequence, just like your check numbers, right? 1,000, 1,001, 1,002, and so on. That way you can make sure there's no gaps in your reporting. Unfortunately, the problem with access is you can delete records in a table that you're using auto numbers for, and those numbers are pretty much gone. Yeah, there's a trick you can play to get them back. I just covered that in my previous video. But for the most part, for all intents and purposes, you don't want to reuse those auto numbers. The trick here is to create your own sequential numbering system. It's not that hard to do, but it does involve a tiny little bit of programming. Let me show you. Okay, here's my real simple customer database. I've got my customer form. I've got my order form that lists all my orders. This is for everybody. And if I open up a customer like this one, I can go here and see just that customer's order. See, there's customer ID. So it basically limits the list. Now, this order ID is an auto number and it's used internally for the database only. Your customer should never see that. Your accountant doesn't necessarily have to see that. Exposing your auto numbers to your customers or anybody else may cause some problems. Look for my video on auto numbers, good or bad, for more information on that. Anyways, if you want to make sure these are all sequentially numbered, we have to create our own number and we can use a function called dmax to do that. But first we have to create our own field to put that value in. So let's go to our order table, design view. Now you can make another value in here called order number. Make that just a number, long integer is fine. I like to use ID to represent auto numbers. I like to use number to represent number things. And if I have a value that might have text in it, I like to use the word code, like customer code, if you want to put you know characters or stuff in there. That's just my personal naming convention. Now what I want to do is I want to index this down here and make it no duplicates. Now indexing will speed up your searches and sorting and it will make it easier for you to do lookups on this value. But the biggest benefit is that Access will automatically make sure that no duplicate values are entered. So I'm going to go index. I'm going to go yes, no duplicates for the order number field. Save your table. Now, the existing data is okay because those are all null values. I just entered this. But if I tried to put the same thing in here twice, like 101, it'll yell at me. It says it can't do it because it got duplicate values. All right, so escape out of that. Now, unfortunately, you're going to have to type in these values yourself. Yeah, there's a way we could fill these in automatically, but it'll take too long to go over here. I will actually put that in the extended cut members edition. The rest of us, let's just type in these values. Fortunately, we only got a couple here, so it's not going to take that long. 106, 107, 108, 109, and 110. Okay. So what I want to do next is I want to... In my form, you can't do this at the table level, you have to do this at the form level. In my form, I want to go to this field, look up what the largest value is, and then add one to it. You could do this in a query, I strongly recommend a form. So let's close this, save changes, sure. Let's go to our order form that we have here. Design view. Now we have to add that order number in here. All right, I'm going to copy the order ID, copy, paste, because it's already gray. We don't want users changing it. All right, so let's double click on that. And let's change this to order number, the control source. All right, and the name. I'm going to lock this field. Go to the data tab and change locked to yes. That means the user can't change this value. Okay, especially if you're not the only user of your database. If other people use it, you don't want to let them go in there and modify it unless you do. If you want them to be able to change that, they can. They won't be able to type in different numbers that are already in use, but they could type in higher numbers. If it comes in that the next number is 205, then they could type in 215, but that kind of defeats the purpose of having 
sequential numbering with no gaps. So it's all how you want to build your database, of course. All right, I'm just going to change this back here to order number. Order num is fine. All right, let's close this and see what we got. Save changes, yes. Orders, okay. That looks good. Now, when I start typing in the next order, now, yes, this is a simplified order form. It only has the ID, the customer ID, and the order amount. You'd have other things on here, like your order date, you know, uh, shipping address, is it paid, all that stuff. This is, for, this is simplified for class purposes. And yes, you'd probably want customer ID to be a combo box. You could pick the customer instead of having to type in their ID. But let's say customer one places another order. All right, at that moment, I want this value to be filled in. Okay, so I'm gonna hit escape. Let's go back. Let's go to design view. Let's pull up the properties for the form itself. Double click on that little box right there. Here's the property sheet. Let's go to events. We're going to find the before insert event. Before insert, you'll see right down here, it's a function that runs when the first character is typed into a new record. All right, before insert. Hit the dot, dot, dot button. If you get asked what kind of builder you want, type in code builder. Okay, now right here, I want to put in the value for order number. All right, what is it gonna be? Well, order number equals dmax, the largest value all right, what field, order number, inside of quotes, comma, domain is what table, order T. And that's it. Okay, but that's just going to bring back the biggest value. I want to add one to it. All right, so that'll say go out to the table, find the largest value, add one to it, and set that in the order number field. Okay, save it. Let's come back out here. I'm going to close down this form and reopen it. Now, as soon as I start putting the next order in, boom, there's 111. See, for $17. Yeah, my tab order is messed up, that's okay. Next record, customer five, boom, 112. See? Now, this will create the next record. It's up to you to prevent them from deleting existing ones, to prevent gaps. What I recommend is that you don't ever delete records from your order form. Don't let your users delete records. You can control that in the form properties right up here under data and change allowed deletions to no. Don't let them delete anything. Now if I save my form and open it back up again, if I try to delete order five, nope, I'm hitting delete on the keyboard, can't do it. Can I change these? Nope, they're locked. And the code that we put in will insert the next order num automatically. Don't let them delete this stuff. Have a have a checkbox over here that maybe says void or something, or is it valid? Okay, if you want to be able to indicate which orders were just quotes or they weren't placed or whatever. Never, 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 never delete data like orders, customers, that kind of stuff. Keep it in the database, mark it inactive. So this should satisfy your accountant you could print that number out for him because he'll be able to see, he's your accountant, he'll be able to see you know, what, uh, what the order number is for all of your customers. He'll know that you've only done X in sales. He'll know that you've only done 500 orders. You don't want your customers necessarily to see that because then you know, if, if customer five places an order here on June 1st and then customer five comes back again three days later and he's now order number 114, then he can see you know exactly that you've had two orders in you know how, however many days it's like guest checks in a restaurant right if you go on monday and you get that guest check number and then you go back a couple of days later and it's only gone up three then you know they've only given out three guest checks in the past three days or with that pad i mean it, it there are different variances it brings up something called the german tank problem that i talk a lot about in my other video my auto numbers good or bad video I'll put a link to that video in the description box below. So there you go. That's how you can create a custom order number sequence that is sequential, that Access will automatically add one to, and you don't have to give up your order IDs to your customers. You can start this number at whatever you want, and it'll all just go up by one each time. Now, for the members, Extended Cut Edition is going to include three things. First, I'll show you how to replace null values with order numbers for any existing records. So you don't have to keep typing them in. If you got a few thousand records in your database already, this will save you some time. 
There is a problem with this method for multi-user databases if you're not the only one using your database. If you run this function and you go to add a record and someone else is adding a record at the same time, you might get assigned the same number. It involves some programming, but it's not that hard to alleviate that problem. And finally, I'll show you how to do a custom order number sequence for each customer. So your customers will get custom numbers just for them. So if it's XYZ company, their orders will be XYZ001, XYZ002, and so on. And you can keep that in addition to the other order number that you have for your accountant. So you can make sure that over the entire company, your orders are sequential and each customer has sequential orders as well. That's in the members only extended cut edition for silver members and up. How do you become a member? Well, just click on that join button on my YouTube channels right next to the subscribe button. You'll see several different levels to pick from silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos. But don't worry, I'm still going to keep making these free tech help videos. So make sure you subscribe to my channel. That just means you'll get notifications whenever I release new free videos. Click on the little bell there for all and you'll get emailed every time I put something new on YouTube. And also make sure to stop by my website. I've got a pretty active access forum there. Want to see your question answered? Visit my tech help page. And if you haven't yet, check out my free three hour long access level one course. It's free on my website and on YouTube. And if you like it, level two is just $1. Thanks for watching. And I hope you learned something today. We'll see you next time.